I greet you all wherever you are, whether it is day or night. Welcome to Mamlakak Broadcast Network's Breaking News. The world is going badly, and we are going to get the position of our government on the world question right away point by point. Stay connected. Currently Africans have become the center of economic attention, that is to say that at the same time, African countries are in the grip of the desire to free themselves from the pressure of neocolonialism by developing a strong feeling anti-French in sub-Saharan Africa. Meanwhile, coups continue to proliferate in West African states, to such an extent that ECOWAS finds itself having to give serious ultimatums to Niger, the last country to depose their president. So there are some useful questions that arise in sub-Saharan Africa. Is democracy really appropriate for these states? The answer is no, because the true will of God in relation to world governance is the kingdom of God, his only will. Let's go further. Russia is getting closer and closer to African countries to talk about the issue of state sovereignty and global polypresence. It is therefore a question of affirming itself. This is good news in a way because it removes the hegemony of the USA which wants to take the place of the government of God on earth as they wrote in the document of the New World Order. It is important to realize that even if these movements of tumult are still happening today, either the world is heading towards a new single bad governance, or it is heading towards an exacerbated poly-egocentric governance. So, since all people seek stability, what should be done? It is fair to tell us that we must seek the kingdom of God with violence. Let's not let go. North Africa is increasingly plagued by sex tourism. As announced by Slate magazine, it is increasingly certain that the record unemployment observed by this part of Africa is the major reason which gives access to this mentality and also the permanent desire to emigrate to new lands. But why don't people actually work? Because they simply did not understand the mission that God gave us. The kingdom of God has nothing against the desire to emigrate, but one thing is certain, we should all understand that it must be seen as a means like so many others to succeed in our mission. Many want to leave their land of birth out of envy, out of covetousness. If that's why, it's because of ignorance. The earth is the same everywhere. What causes this problem is a lack of culture of the kingdom of heaven in the first place. This lack of culture makes it difficult to find opportunities wherever you are. There are crises everywhere, they can be managed by remedying them through the kingdom, it creates work because the kingdom of God is about the economy to rule the earth. The basic mission is to spread Eden everywhere, to spread the atmosphere of the kingdom of God wherever the least blade of grass grows. It's a question of finding the way to do it, but whatever our will, God's will takes precedence. We have to get into it more and more. What is his will for you? This is your question? Lord, where do you want me to settle to accomplish your will? North Africa, may the kingdom of God visit you and overthrow all misunderstandings and false gods. Currently more than 76.7 .7 million people are food insecure in East Africa. The World Food Program WFP, which is a tool for the massive destruction of human dignity and the ability to recover for life change, is specialized to be financed by the super-rich who just want to better keep people in poverty, want and starvation. The global health problems we now can concentrate in just a few countries as it happened with Ebola that it concentrated very, very heavily in three West African countries or pretty much globally, as is the case with the current COVID-19 pandemic. 
or the HIV pandemic or the obesity and NCDs such as heart disease and diabetes pandemic or the mental health uh, uh, problems uh, pandemic. So I think that uh, we are seeing more and more and more and more the very profound uh, links between social inequalities and uh, uh, health problems and uh, climate change as becoming truly, truly global uh, in nature. You know, as some of the astronauts can say, from space you cannot see the artificial borders that humankind has established in global health it doesn't see those either, or the agents that cause these problems, they don't see at all uh, those borders. When the first church came under the governance of the Holy Spirit, everyone came with what they had in order to distribute equitably among themselves according to the needs of each other. The apostles who were the model of royal earthly government at that time received these goods and distributed them fairly. Yet the peoples of East Africa are among the least numerous in Africa. We at MBNK News TV call on their governments, what are you doing? Don't be fooled. Do not allow yourself to be manipulated by food and gifts of wickedness. Impose the kingdom on your people and change the destiny of your nation. Uh, there is a ton of evidence that actually this very powerful uh, alliance that led to the global health governance that we have really as a legacy of, of neocolonialism. Actually, it, the way they perpetuated their system was by influencing a lot how public health students were trained. So a lot of these uh, agencies and foundations actually funded heavily uh, universities like Johns Hopkins uh, University, like the London School of Hygiene uh, and, tropical, and Tropical Medicine and so on. So I would say that here we have to deal with a counterfactual, you know, if they were very successful through academic institutions to train students uh, following the neo-colonial lens of white saviorism and, and we know better us versus them and essentially top down is the only way that these people will ever improve their lives because they are ignorant and they really don't have any assets they have nothing to contribute to the building of equity in in their countries then why can't we think in reverse and say shouldn't we start a very very power or continue because the Yale school of public health has started this many years ago. Should we continue uh, really looking ourselves in the mirror and saying, what is our curriculum doing? How are our courses uh, preparing in a consistent way our students for a world that is really free of, free of neo-colonial thinking when it comes uh, to, uh, to global health? So I would say, that uh, in many ways uh, our great intentions to do that are not moving fast enough and it is because i think this has also to be a whole systems movement so what is it about in truth the mere existence of the concept of poverty versus wealth shows that the kingdom of heaven has not yet been established on earth and that there is much to do, for as long as humans do not eat, it is the responsibility of the sons of God to preach with strength and courage every day until the final coming of the kingdom. Let's not forget that the world is also putting a lot of pressure through this means of food to forcefully impose the LGBTQIAXYZ ideology on countries like Kenya when others have said no to this disgusting culture. Glory be to God, cholera has passed in Malawi. It is no longer a matter of national health. All in all, we have to talk about the 642,000 stateless children who live in Southern Africa. They live in frustration and feel like they don't belong to any nation, have no rights and no protection, but let us tell you that the real nation is the kingdom of God. You are not alone, God calls you to be the worthy representatives of his kingdom on earth.
Wake up and let his kingdom come to you. Let the sea at the top where the eagles have their home. Our home. Amen. Bye.